NerdRotic.com. Welcome back to NerdRotic. My name is Gary Beekler, and I come to you from NerdRotic.com, and we need to talk about Captain Marvel and Marvel Comics and Disney. Is Disney thinking about shutting down Marvel Comics, and did Captain Marvel play a part in this? Well, she certainly did. She was certainly the figurehead of a movement that has brought down Marvel Comics to its knees. Let's go to the article. This headline comes across, of course, it's clickbait, but man, it's something I've thought about since Disney bought Marvel Comics. Now, I used to own a comic store, and a lot of things have happened in the last 72 hours. Uh, EVS just did a great live stream on a Comics Pro meeting with my friend Brian Hibbs, basically laying out that the retailers are uh, on their last leg, and they need the publishers to do something right now. So forgive me, Doctor Who fans. I actually am a huge comic fan and was a retailer, and I need to talk about it, and it does relate to Captain Marvel. Disney shutting down Marvel Comics? Wow, that's some... That is some headlines right there. The comic book industry is presently said to be in a state of collapse. And following the recent news of the troubles within DC Comics, now it's being speculated Disney may actually be considering shutting down Marvel Comics. Speculation about the problems within Marvel Comics comes from the press release issued by the company where Marvel Comics chief creative officer Joe Quesada and editor-in-chief C.B. Sabluski are attending the upcoming South by Southwest, where the pair will be hosting a panel and putting it forth how Marvel Comics is responsible for the success in other markets such as film, TV, video games, and merchandise. Titled Marvel Comics, From Comics to Screens, the hour-long panel will look at how some of Marvel Comics' iconic characters and storylines have been contributing to the games, movies, and television series that are now renowned among popular culture. Everything starts with an idea, and Marvel Comics is the spark that lights the fire. The press release states in part, Bleeding cool, ugh. Uh, please read Bleeding Fool, actually puts it forth. The reason Kasada and Sabluski are doing the panel is, in essence, to save Marvel Comics. As sales have been dwindling for years, and they need to convince Disney that publishing Marvel comic books, even though they are losing money, is still a good idea because it is the inspiration for the markets that do make money, such as Kevin Feige's insanely popular MCU. Well, it is insanely popular, but nothing lasts forever. There is the law of diminishing returns, and there's get woke, go broke, hang on. What also played into the recent failure of Marvel Comics is the all new, all different, and trying to push characters and politics on people who don't want them, like Captain Marvel. A retailer summit was recently held, which saw comic book store owner Brian Hibbs offer the industry is nearly on its knees and pointed to Marvel as the main culprit. National sales are very poor. There are comics in the national top 100 that aren't even selling 20,000 copies. A significant number of stores have closed, perhaps as many as 10% of the outlets, Hibbs said. Want a clear and current example of Marvel's preposterous flood the zone strategy? War of the Realms. It's supposed to be their major quarter two project of 2018, but for the first month alone, they're asking us to buy two issues of the series being released with no sales data. That means you have nothing to relate it to. It's a brand new series. They want you to buy it blind. For example, when Secret Invasion came out, I used Civil War data to order those comics, and I know this is getting in the weeds on this stuff, but it's really hard to do it. It's just an educated guess. You have to ask your customers. It's a pain in the ass, but it is part of the direct market. What's the direct market? Well, booksellers and magazine sellers used to be able to return their stuff. Comic books are non-returnable, and I hate to be that guy, but I'm going to be that guy. When I was selling comics, this was five years ago when I sold my store, I was asking for for returnability to be returned and it was met with skepticism and scorn and a lot of complacency but in the first month alone they're asking us to buy two issues of the series being released with no sales data as well as four different tie-in miniseries all six of these comics which are built around a six issue storyline will require final orders from us before we've sold a single comic to the actual reader and i can hear you What's this got to do with Captain Marvel? I'm getting there. But when a comic shop retailer orders comic books, it's from one distributor. There are a couple others out there you can order from, but mainly it's just one. It's a monopoly by accident, and they are called Diamond. And they give us every opportunity to learn about the books before we order them. But sometimes stuff would come up in what's called Final Cutoff, and this is your last chance to order, and there would be no covers. There would be 
no descriptions. You would just have to buy it based on Marvel's hype. And this is what Marvel does. It's a scam. EVS said this. Other retailers have said this. I've said this for years. We are not partners. We are customers. And they're scamming us. And they've been scamming us. Well, I'm not a retailer anymore. Scamming them for years. Stole money from us for years. Yes, stole money from us. Marvel would not take back returns for a long time, and Brian Hibbs had to sue them to start accepting the returns on damages and stuff like that. So that's the kind of partner Marvel was. That was prior to Disney, but Marvel hasn't really changed fundamentally being owned by Disney and uh, what the, the management was before. They have pretty much stayed the same. Uh, well, I would say they've actually gotten worse under Disney, to be honest with you, just from uh, what perception I have right now of current Marvel Comics and the editorial staff there that is much more concerned with their politics than actually making money. I continue. Is there anyone in this room that thinks this is good, that this is sustainable, that this will sell more comics to more readers, that this will sell any comics to people who aren't already on board for Marvel's periodicals already? Again, this is asked by my friend Brian Hibbs, who bought my comic store, by the way. He owns the Comics Experience Outpost, which used to be called the Comic Outpost, which was my shop in San Francisco. Here is where Captain Marvel comes in. Captain Marvel is the figurehead for SJW Marvel. And this video is for my subscribers who haven't been following the comic book stuff and who've been following the Star Trek and Doctor Who stuff. And it's very similar. As a matter of fact, it's exactly the same. SJW Marvel is the title of politically correct Marvel. They've been injecting uh, personal politics, uh, some feminism, just everything. And it's been forced on the retailers. Now, many of the retailers agree with these politics, but it's also infested it in different ways. It's made them, oh, I don't know, less merit-based. We'll just say that. So the art has gone downhill. The writing has gone downhill. The editing has gone downhill. Any of this sound familiar? What helped kick this off? Well, there was a lot of people, but the main figurehead in the beginning was your boy Zack when he did a Captain Marvel video. That was the first one I saw. And actually, world-class bullshitters played a part in this too with another great video. Marvel is literally begging you to buy their comics. We are now a couple of years down the line from this, and it is now hit rock bottom and there is no coming back. I was going to open a comic store. I had been planning on it for five years since I sold my comic store. I had a five-year non-compete with Brian that ended in December and I was ready to go. I was going to do a pop-up and then I was going to find a brick and mortar and get going again. But as I started going into things and actually Brian and I had a big long talk in a restaurant, which the details I'll keep private. After talking to him, talking to a few other people, and looking at the sales data, there was no way in hell I was coming back. And thankfully, the channel started blowing up. And honestly, it's much easier to work from here. And I can start an online store related to nerdrotic.com coming soon. And I don't have to deal with Diamond or Marvel or DC anymore because we weren't business partners with them. We weren't. We were just customers. How does Captain Marvel relate to this? Well, they changed the character fundamentally. They being the powers that be that Marvel. And what they have done, because they have these guaranteed sales, because we don't get to return comics, they get to inject whatever the hell they want in their comics. And it doesn't really matter how they're drawn anymore. The art is terrible now. And it's not just that. Disney buying Marvel... That was a huge problem, too. They allowed this to happen. And now they want to roll out Captain Marvel and possibly inject some of this stuff in the MCU, this is what people are worried about. If you're wondering why some people are spurging out over possibly getting some SJWism in the MCU, it's because we've seen it. The data is there. It's been through Comicsgate all along. And listen, there's the argument out there that Comicsgate is just a bunch of racist, misogynist. God, we've heard this crap before. It is simply a large group of, of people who are of all makes and sizes, men and women, who just want to be entertained by their comic books. I don't need... Any side's politics is the same thing I'm saying about Doctor Who, same thing I'm saying about Star Trek, Star Wars. We just want our entertainment back, and there's it's, it's clear that they're trying to inject propaganda in our stuff to shape minds, to change the narrative. Who knows why, or maybe it's just selfish reasons. I don't really care. But Captain Marvel 
is the figurehead of this. That's why there's such a kerfuffle over Captain Marvel. Let's get to the rest of the article. While it's currently just speculation that Disney would shut down Marvel Comics, worth the mention that it is a good possibility one day Disney decides to simply license out the characters and stop publishing it altogether. Disney CEO Bob Iger, in an investor's call, recently said the company isn't going to bother producing video games in-house because they feel it isn't worth it. Perhaps that could be the fate of the Marvel comic book industry. Again, this is something I've been saying on my podcast for four years now. When Disney bought Marvel, all you have to do is look back at past instances that are similar. Disney bought the Anaheim Ducks. They were the Mighty Ducks. Disney bought the Anaheim Angels. And everybody thought, oh, wow, you know, they own ABC, uh, ESPN. They're going to have these two sports ball teams. Everything's going to be great. They handled them like crap and they had to sell them eventually. And don't be surprised if I don't know if they'd sell Marvel, but licensing it out. Absolutely. And they're already starting to work with IDW in a very small way. So maybe that will be the case. Or maybe worse, it gets licensed out overseas. If you happen to follow the comic book news rather closely, I'll add my own two cents in that I have been complaining about this pro these problems surrounding Marvel Comics for years. Basically, when Marvel Comics canceled titles like Nova and Guardians of the Galaxy for no good reason and replaced them with characters no one wanted to read about and promoted the new series with dozens and dozens of variants, one issue had upwards of 30 variant covers. Now, if you don't know what a variant cover is, it is a different cover. So you're selling the same comic 30 times. And there are people out there, I've sold to many of them, who will buy every cover. That will destroy your industry. Again, you want to look at another industry that did this to themselves? The baseball card industry. It caused a huge backlash amongst readers. Marvel Comics then produced to continue with that format with their popular comics with the results backfiring completely. What isn't mentioned in this article, like I said, is the politics, is what has been going on. This version of Carol Danvers, who is known widely as Carl Manvers, it is horribly drawn. She went from this to this. Now, I'm not saying you need this. But this, who are you making this for? This was an editorial decision. Who it came from, I don't know. But it's a decision that was made without the fans in mind. It was a decision that was made personally for personal reasons. They're going to have to like this because this is what I like. And not even considering what the fans like. And they rejected it soundly and constantly. So yes, I will get back to my Doctor Who video. This is how I feel about this stuff, but this is why people are worried about the movie Captain Marvel. There's probably a lot of normies and probably a lot of people who don't know about the whole comic thing, the comics gate thing, and don't know what the real argument is behind it. There is a lot of BS out there about this argument. And what they do is like what they're doing with me with Doctor Who, is they try to find a couple of bad actors on Twitter with the eight followers, and they try to group us in with them. When it is simply, we want good comics. We don't want less women. We don't. We are not against diversity. That was always there. Women have always worked in comics. That is not what's going on here. It's being injected with a bunch of politics. There were forced sales on the retailers. The retailers couldn't return any of these comic books. I really wish the retailers had spoken up earlier because they have known about this for quite some time, but I'm glad they eventually did, and I'm glad Brian eventually said something and he was the one who did it. This is, uh, I know it's a bit of a rambling video, but I feel very passionate about this. And hopefully the movie Captain Marvel will not be anything like Kelly Sue DeConnick's comic. Because if it is, well, then the MCU is going down that road. And I don't want that to happen. But again, if anybody's questioning why there's so much controversy around this is because of what's going on with Marvel Comics. We have data. It is provable that it kills sales. And as more comic shops go down, the more unsustainable Marvel Comics becomes due to the direct market. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, hey, thanks for listening this long. May the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Nergerotic.com, please subscribe.